top quality students were scarce enough at average institutions, let alone at Jefferson High School. That was probably why the district was so keen on giving student performance-based incentives to teachers. Because Jefferson didn't have an endowment like Bridgerton to cushion the bonuses the district offered, Jefferson teachers got smaller but still substantial amounts when their students did well. Teachers got a $500 bonus for students who scored in the top 5%, $750 for students in the top 2%, and $1,000 for students in the top 1%. Of course, for the teachers at Jefferson, these bonuses were more like a myth because no one at the school had ever received one. There was no way they could produce a student who would score so high on the SATs. It was just plain impossible. Even their school principal dreaded the subject and was embarrassed to mention it. There was no point. Mr. Thompson heaved yet another heavy sigh. At the rate they were going, none of this year's students seemed likely to qualify for even second-tier universities. Heck, he wouldn't be surprised if none of the students got into college at all. He shook his head in lamentation for all the bonus money that would never line his pockets. It wasn't until he flipped to the second page of the exam he was currently scoring that he realized something. Mr. Thompson had just finished checking the first page, and the student had actually answered most of the questions correctly. Intrigued, he sped through the rest of the test papers and calculated the final score. 780 points. Who was this brilliant student? Ever since Mr. Thompson had taught this English class, no one had been able to score above 620. He flipped through the pages. When he saw the name scribbled at the top of the first page, his expression changed from one of amazement to one of suspicion. The next morning, Mr. Thompson walked into the teacher's lounge where an older teacher got his attention. Mr. Thompson, the physics teacher said, is there a new student in your homeroom class by the name of Damon? Yes, there is. Why? What's wrong? The other man rubbed his eyes for a brief second before producing a set of test papers, which he handed to Mr. Thompson. This is yesterday's math practice test from my class. Just look at it. He somehow got all of the questions correct. He got a perfect score. I have to say I'm very impressed. As he was right to be. After all, he had never had a student who had managed to score that high on a practice test before. Whoever this new transfer student was, he must be something of a prodigy in the subject. From the other side of the room, the calculus teacher perked up. He had heard the hubbub and rushed over in excitement. I know this Damon as well. He scored very highly on other math practice tests in my class too. I never imagined such a day would come for us teachers here in Jefferson. It looks like this boy is some kind of genius. Mr. Thompson grabbed the test paper that the calculus teacher held out to him. If what these two were saying was true, and it appeared that it was, then that made Damon the highest achieving student in their school. Mr. Thompson's heart thundered in his chest as another thought came to his mind. He ran out of the teacher's lounge without so much as a goodbye to the other teachers. He spotted his target, the AP literature teacher, and practically lunged at the woman. Mrs. Shaw, how did your practice test go yesterday? Mrs. Shaw's face lit up and Mr. Thompson suddenly knew what she was about to say. Well, it went rather well for our new student, Damon, is it? His literary talent is excellent. But I wasn't going to tell him that. I thought he might get cocky if I did. She took out Damon's test paper and showed it to Mr. Thompson. I knew it! The AP language teacher exclaimed from across the hall. He's excellent at writing as well. He got the highest writing score I've ever seen in all my years of teaching here. He was also brandishing Damon's test paper as he jogged over. Mr. Thompson stared at the test papers in his hands, his eyes wide with shock. Language 780, mathematics 790, reading 770, and a perfect score on the essay section. His total score was 2,340 out of 2,400. While they knew some practice tests were easier than the real thing, they were all shocked that a student had managed to score that high. Just who was this Damon? Based on these practice test scores alone, he could easily get into one of the top 10 universities in the country. Never in history of Jefferson High School had they ever had a student with this level of aptitude. Three years ago, Jefferson's principal had managed to poach a top performing student from another school to try to boost their averages, but the kid hadn't managed to get into any Ivies. Even so, he'd gotten into the best university a Jefferson graduate had ever been admitted to. 
The principal had used the same tactic to get a few more sharp students to transfer the following year as well. It had been quite a glorious period for Jefferson High School, all things considered. But none of those students had even come close to perfect SAT scores or Ivy admissions. And now this student came along, freshly expelled from Bridgerton High School, scoring 2,340 on the first practice test of the year. Damon had managed to break records at Jefferson on his second day. It was such an unprecedented development, Mr. Thompson was certain no one outside the faculty would believe it. His excitement quickly abated at the thought. He wasn't naive. He knew people tended to resort to cunning methods when desperate. More to the point, he knew about Damon's bad grades and his general poor performance at his former school. He had gotten below average scores, so how had he managed to score close to 2400 in such a short time? Even more curious was the fact that Bridgerton High School was known to be protective of their high-achieving students. They would never have let one of their best transfer so easily. After all, having top students was good for their reputation. Surely they wouldn't have let go of a student as brilliant as Damon, unless... Unless he had committed some unforgivable crime, or caused a scandal that would ruin the school's reputation. But if that had happened, surely Mr. Thompson would have heard about it, and surely the boy would have been punished, even outside the institution. Mr. Thompson scowled. There was one other possible explanation for this. Damon must have cheated on the practice tests. Yes, that makes a lot more sense. Mr. Thompson's head swirled with various scenarios as he tried to piece it together. Many of Jefferson's practice test materials were obtained from Bridgerton High School. They got them secondhand, so to speak. What if, before coming to Jefferson High School, Damon had already taken these exact same tests back at Bridgerton High School. If so, he would have already received the graded papers with the corrected answers, which meant that Damon practically had a key to the practice tests. As Mr. Thompson was struck with this realization, he let out a derisive snort. Damon truly was an awful student. If he had no scruples cheating during practice tests, who was to say that he wouldn't find a way to cheat during the actual SATs? Mr. Thompson narrowed his eyes and took all of five seconds to make a decision. In his heart, he felt it imperative that Damon be confronted for his misdeeds. And so, after first period, he called the boy to his office. Damon was calm as he approached the office. His eyes were a little curious, but they were clear. He knew he hadn't done anything wrong, though he wasn't the least bit worried about having been called out of class. Mr. Thompson told him to sit down and then he proceeded to sip his coffee while staring at the student across the desk from him. How? He finally said, his words slow and deliberate. Did you do on yesterday's practice tests? He was hoping that Damon would confess on his own. There was nothing Mr. Thompson hated more in life than students who cheated. Damon frowned, confused. I'm sorry, what? He presumed he had done well but the papers hadn't been handed back yet, so how could he possibly know anything about his scores? Unfortunately, Mr. Thompson took his clueless expression to be an act. He thought Damon was insulting his intelligence by pretending to be innocent. He slammed his coffee cup on the table. When he spoke again, his voice was low and laden with warning. I don't like students who cheat. You must know this already, but I need to remind you that cheaters never get into good colleges. Damon finally understood the reason for Mr. Thompson's suspicious expression. So the man thought he had cheated. Did that mean that Damon scored higher than anyone had expected on the practice tests? He couldn't help feeling giddy at the realization and his heart thundered in excitement. He kept his face neutral though because he didn't want to further agitate the already angry Mr. Thompson. I'm sorry, Mr. Thompson. I don't quite understand what you're trying to say. I didn't cheat. Mr. Thompson slammed his fist on the table. Are you lying to my face right now? He roared, and Damon pictured steam coming out of his ears and nostrils. Do you expect me to believe that you scored a 2340 on your own? That's right, I did. Although Damon's voice was still steady as he spoke, he was really tempted to jump up and down with joy the moment he heard his score. He had improved so much in just a few days. Granted, 
The practice tests had been much easier than he had anticipated, but he still hadn't expected to score as well as he had. His confidence blossomed in the blink of an eye. At this rate, he was only going to get even better. He might even have a shot at a perfect score by the time the real test came around. If he worked even harder, the goal of getting into one of the best colleges in the country would no longer be just a pipe dream. Mr. Thompson sputtered, furious and dumbfounded at the same time. How could this boy lie to him so easily? He narrowed his eyes at Damon and tried to think the matter over once more. If the boy had actually taken the same set of practice tests back at Bridgerton High School and relied on his memory of them to take the test here, he supposed that wouldn't exactly be considered cheating. All that would prove was that Damon had a good memory and was highly attentive to details. In the end, Mr. Thompson sighed and said, All right, I believe you. I hope that you'll do just as well on the real SATs. And make sure you don't do anything that would disappoint your parents or any of the faculty here. As your teacher, I want you to be successful here. And that means being honest. He didn't wait for a response and waved at Damon to leave the office. However, Mr. Thompson still wasn't fully convinced that Damon wasn't hiding something from him. Even after Damon had left, he was still pondering the possibilities. Something just wasn't adding up here. Mr. Thompson, the calculus teacher piped up, adjusting his glasses. Did you say Damon got a 2340 out of 2400? Mr. Thompson nodded, but quickly said, I don't think he did it on his own. He was expelled from Bridgerton High School recently, and I've gone through his file. He's never scored that highly on a practice test. He was scoring in the low 600s on all sections up until now. He couldn't have improved so much in just a few days. The other teacher nodded in agreement. He understood Mr. Thompson's suspicions. It was rare enough to have any student get that close to a perfect score. It wasn't just good for Jefferson standards, but good for any institution. When the bell rang for dismissal, Damon walked out the door with a spring in his step Mr. Thompson's doubts didn't bother him at all. If anything, they only boosted his morale and made him more certain that he had a bright future ahead. He met up with Liam and Emmett at the school gate, and the three rode their bikes home. They had chatted the entire way, talking about the universities they were eyeing, parties coming up, and saying goodbye to classmates they'd known for years. Damon might have been kicked out of Bridgerton High School, but the friendships he had forged there were pure and solid. In all the years he had known Liam and Emmett, they had only ever wished him well, and they really knew him. They even knew about his difficult circumstances. Their bond hadn't changed even though they went to different schools now. Hey, Liam said, there's supposed to be a party on December 20th to celebrate the end of the semester. As they got closer to home, they spotted a black Mercedes Benz parked on the street. When they got closer, a beautiful girl with long flowing hair emerged from the car. Avery! Emmett exclaimed in surprise. Liam and Damon stared at the girl with similar astonished expressions. She turned at the sound of her name and looked at them, her eyes twinkling like a bright spring morning. She was tall and beautiful. She was the type of girl who could make teenagers' hearts beat faster with one look at her. Avery had also grown up alongside Damon and the two other boys. She and Damon had been childhood sweethearts. They'd been inseparable as young kids. But then Avery's father had become successful in the real estate industry and moved the family out of the neighborhood and into an expensive building with an elevator and a doorman on the Upper East Side. And just like that, Avery had turned from a little girl with one threadbare coat that was two sizes too small to an enviable young princess who never had to worry about food or clothing. Over the years, the gap between her and the boys had only widened. They were different classes now, and lived different lives. To Avery's credit, she worked hard in school, and she was also an incredibly talented girl. Almost as good in academics and extracurriculars as Veronica. She had studied music since her early years and could play all kinds of musical instruments. At the moment, she was under the tutelage of a professional musician, and she hoped to one day become one as well. Avery had been very pretty, even as a child, all three boys had dreamed of marrying her when they grew up, but none of them had ever admitted it out loud. Instead, they all chose to keep it tucked deep inside their hearts. What was the point anyway? Avery was too far out of their reach. She smiled at them now and greeted Emmett first, then Liam. 
When her eyes drifted over to Damon, she froze, stunned for a few seconds. She had heard that he'd been expelled from Bridgerton High School. Avery frowned as she looked at him and thought about how pitiful he was. Once the news of his expulsion had broken, everyone had instantly understood that his future was on the line. But she didn't want him to feel that she was looking down on him because of that. After a moment's hesitation, she offered him a wide smile. Hello, Damon. Unbeknownst to her, he had quickly caught on to what she was trying to do. With his sharp senses, he immediately picked up on her look of pity, which was exactly like Veronica's. Damon hated being the object of pity. His jaw clenched as he gritted his teeth, but he quickly returned the smile. Hi, Avery. Are you here to visit your grandfather? In the past, Avery's sympathetic gaze would have made him feel inferior, but he was a different person now. He knew he was more than capable of shocking those who had been belittling him, and that knowledge gave him higher self-esteem than he had ever hoped for. He had a feeling that the day when he would shatter everyone's perceptions of him was not far off. He might as well savor all the moments leading up to it. They'd only make the day sweeter when it came. I did come to see him, Avery nodded. But I'm also here for Asher. He told me to meet him here at Old Town. He said he wants to be my mentor. Asher? Liam repeated in amazement. As in, the Asher? That guy's gonna be your mentor? Avery nodded excitedly, beaming with obvious pride. Liam's jaw dropped in both admiration and envy. The pop artist Asher had been a fixture in the music industry for years, and he was still popular, even today. He was a big star, and he'd even done international tours because he was so popular overseas. He was especially loved by young audiences. There was even a short documentary about his rise to fame that had come out in the theaters a few years back. Asher was arguably the biggest act of the last two decades. To think that Avery had been able to catch the attention of such a high-profile artist? She was clearly on another level compared to the boys. Indeed, she was feeling like she was on top of the world. Even though they tried to be happy for her, this news instantly put a damper on the boys' moods. Liam and Emmett couldn't help but feel unworthy compared to Avery. Avery? Liam said with a sheepish smile, his tone timid and careful. Are you coming to the end of the semester party on December 20th? Some kids from Bridgerton are throwing it. Liam always wanted to spend time with Avery, but somehow today the glaring contrast between her and them seemed more pronounced than ever. He couldn't stop himself from worrying. Was she too good for them now? Did she still care about her old classmates and friends? I'll definitely be there, Avery said brightly, and the boys heaved a collective sigh of relief. She turned away then, flicking her beautiful hair into the wind and following her father into her grandfather's building. As expected, the few months before the SATs was a period of high anxiety for all the students. Understandably enough, some students chose to skip class as a reaction to all the pressure they were feeling. And then there were those who soldiered on through the long days and burned the midnight oil, hoping it would pay off when they got college acceptance letters in the spring. Damon belonged to the latter group. He might have an arguably unparalleled intellect now, but he had still slacked off during the most of the first three years of high school. His knowledge was built on shaky foundations, so to speak. He wasn't willing to take any chances. He knew these last moments were critical, and he couldn't let the promise of his future success slip from his grasp. Besides, He'd recently heightened his own expectations for himself. He was no longer just hoping to get into any old college that would have him. No. Now he set his sights higher. He wanted to be the best of the best. His efforts didn't go unnoticed by his parents. Though they were happy to see that their formerly errant son seemed to have turned over a new leaf, they couldn't help but worry that he might be pushing himself too hard. And what if, after his hard work, he still couldn't get into the university of his choice. The rest of the fall semester was full of uncertainty, not only for Damon, but for his family as well. At school, they'd started taking full-length practice tests every two days. Ever since the issue with the first test, Damon made sure to keep his scores in the 600 range so as not to arouse any more of Mr. Thompson's suspicions. After the first couple of rounds where his average returned to normal, Mr. Thompson finally stopped paying so much attention to him. After all, from Mr. Thompson's perspective, 
This proved that his earlier doubts hadn't been misguided. Damon had indeed earned that astounding 2340 score by cheating. Despite his new goals and resolve, Damon made sure to take some time to relax. He knew it would do more harm than good if he never took a break from studying. And so he picked back up some of his old hobbies, playing basketball and kickboxing to manage his stress. He also picked up his guitar and strummed a tune from time to time, sometimes even composing his own melodies and writing lyrics. He had always thought of his favorite pastimes as just that, a way to take a breather, nothing more. But after what had happened to him at the lake, he noticed things were different. His strength and stamina had vastly improved, and so had his creativity. Now he could easily run a marathon every day and not feel exhausted at all. He could shoot basket after basket without breaking a sweat. He was now able to play any song on the guitar after hearing it just once, and he even improvised some riffs that sounded better than the originals. He even wrote a pop song about a young man hoping for a bright future and was surprised by how catchy it was. Damon was very happy with the song. The melody flowed smoothly and the lyrics were deep. The final product was both pensive and upbeat. He was proud of it. After thinking it over for some time, he made the casual decision to upload his song to the internet. He wanted to put something out there that would resonate with other young people and hopefully inspire them to strive for a better new chapter in their lives. Well, a small part of him did also hope that the song would go viral, but he would be content just knowing that there were other kids out there who could relate to it. Day after day, Damon would meet up with Liam and Emmett after class ended and the boys rode their bikes home as usual. Now and then they would catch a glimpse of Avery, sitting in the back of her dad's Mercedes Benz as it zoomed past. Sometimes she would ride a fancy bicycle around the neighborhood. She would always gaze at the buildings she passed with a nostalgic smile, as though this place had been relegated to the most distant corners of her past. Sometimes, Damon would also spot the pop star Asher, albeit only from afar. The music legend was a middle-aged, spindly-looking man, not too tall, but very thin. He didn't go out much, and with his reputation, news had quickly spread throughout the city that he had been seen around the neighborhood. Thus, he often came to his sessions with Avery in secret, afraid that a group of reporters would pounce on him from out of nowhere. In any case, Avery was happy with the arrangement and grateful for the opportunity. She began to fantasize about the day when she would be doing the same thing, hiding from the media after establishing her own place in the industry. When that time came, she would truly be miles above her former childhood playmates. Throughout the fall semester, Damon occasionally got a few text messages from some of his former classmates from Bridgerton. They were mostly from boys who had studied hard and done well in school, and Damon was touched that they continued to reach out to him even after his expulsion, if a little surprised. But one day in late fall, Damon got a message that really stood out to him. It was from Veronica. As soon as he saw it come up on his phone, he opened it eagerly and read, Hi Damon, just thinking of you. I hope you're liking Jefferson. Good luck with the SATs coming up. You're gonna do great. Don't let the pressure get to you. I know you'll be fine no matter what. I hope I get to see you over the holiday break. After the message, she sent an emoji of a cute, smiling face. It was short and simple, but it was sweet, and it warmed Damon's heart. Veronica's beautiful face immediately came to mind. Who would have thought that a girl like her would want to talk to him, especially after he'd been expelled? After reading that message, the whole rest of the day Damon felt like he was walking on air. Damon had always known that Veronica would occasionally watch him and some of the other boys play basketball. He remembered that because every time she was there, the boys would try even harder to show off. Not that he could blame them. Anyone could see why they wanted her attention. Once or twice, he had witnessed her smile at one of his friends, and without fail, the poor boy would go through the rest of his day with a stupid grin on his face. Veronica's charm was potent. Even Damon wasn't immune to it. Whenever he thought of her, a pleasant and comforting feeling always came over him. But then, another thought came to mind. Veronica probably wasn't expecting him to do that well. That would explain why she said he'd be fine no matter what happened. Nonetheless, Damon understood that she was trying to encourage him in her own way. She was telling him not to give up despite the setbacks he'd encountered. 
Damon started to wonder which colleges Veronica was applying to. If, at some point in the future, they both wound up on the same campus, or maybe even the same major, he was sure that Veronica would be shocked to see him, and she would no doubt be happy for him, too. Damon smiled to himself. That would make for a truly marvelous encounter. On the day before the SATs, students from all over the city studied their notes, sharpened their number two pencils, set their alarms, and went to sleep early in preparation for the test that would decide the rest of their lives. Damon waited quietly as the hours ticked by. Soon, the moment he had been looking forward to would finally be here. The next day was bright and sunny, and unusually warm for late fall. The weather forecast reported that temperatures were in the record highs for the time of year. That morning, Damon woke up as he usually would, and as usual, his mother had made toast and scrambled eggs for breakfast. As he ate his meal with relish, Fiona said, Damon, just relax and go take the test with a clear head. Don't let yourself be pressured by everyone else's expectations. Andrew nodded in agreement while peeling a boiled egg. Even if you don't do as well as you'd like, he said in a light tone, you can just try again next year. All you have to do today is try your best. His parents were obviously trying to ease the burden they thought Damon was carrying, and he loved them for it. He smiled at them and nodded obediently. I'll try my best to do my best. The couple couldn't help but laugh at his witty reply. No matter what his final score turned out to be, they were determined to continue supporting him unconditionally. Damon finished his breakfast, then went and grabbed his pencil case, his registration papers, and his ID. He said goodbye to his family and received their well wishes, and then he was off to the testing site. Damon was set to take the SATs at Bridgerton High School, though not in the same room as his buddies Liam and Emmett. Since it was such an important day, he decided to take the bus to school and kick back a little before his brain got to work. When he boarded the bus, he found other students who, like him, were on their way to take the SATs. Unlike him, however, they still had their noses buried in their notes in an attempt at some last-minute cramming. Damon took a seat at the back of the bus, got comfortable, then closed his eyes. He had barely dozed off when a commotion suddenly broke out. He opened his eyes to see a sturdy-looking man wildly brandishing a knife in the middle of the bus aisle. I hate this life, the man shouted, his eyes wide and crazed. Society made me like this, so I'm going to take my revenge. Everyone here is going to die with me. Then without warning, he lunged at a passenger, an old man, and tried to stab him in the chest. Luckily, the passenger was able to dodge the attack by leaning to the side but the blade still pierced his thigh. All hell broke loose. Everyone began to scream, cry, and yell in angry desperation. There was blood on the seat where the old man had been sitting and on the floor. After injuring the old man, the attacker proceeded to wave the knife around, stabbing anyone he could get his hands on. Some people were able to dodge and move out of the way, but many got hurt and staggered to the floor. In the ensuing panic, the driver lost control of the bus and was struggling to regain it. If no one stopped this madman soon, just how much more damage would he cause? How many more innocent people would get hurt? To everyone's utter shock and horror, Damon got to his feet and threw himself at the assailant. Unfortunately, the man noticed him just a few seconds before Damon was upon him. He turned and roared, So you want to die today? You've got some guts! He pointed the knife directly at Damon's chest. But Damon was unfazed. To him, the attacker's movements were far too slow to be threatening. Or perhaps it was Damon who was superhumanly fast. In the blink of an eye, he managed to sidestep the man and snatch the weapon from his hands. All the other passengers watched with a mix of fright and disbelief. The attacker stared blankly at his now empty hand, stunned by what had just happened. He clearly hadn't expected anyone to stand up against him and win. Don't! He screamed at Damon, who was still holding up the knife. The man stumbled back in fear. Don't come any closer! If you do, I'll cut myself! And you'll be a murderer! His words earned scoffs of outrage and snide snickers from other passengers. Damon smirked at him. 
Are you sure you want to hurt yourself? I have another knife on me, the man declared, patting his chest pockets. He was bluffing, of course, and wasn't able to produce anything. Damon took advantage of this momentary distraction and attacked. He grabbed the man's arm, only to find that he had severely overestimated himself. Damon inwardly chastised himself. Ever since that day he'd been thrown in the lake, he thought he could match the strength of three to five men. But it looked like he needed to work on his training some more. But still, he didn't feel any fear at all. If anything, he was excited. This was going to be his first real chance at combat since that fateful day when his body had changed. It was the perfect opportunity to test his physical abilities. Damon took a deep breath and tried to gather all of his strength. Then he willed all that force into his arms. Power surged through his hands down to the tips of his fingers, and he twisted the other man's arm in an effortless motion. Pain and astonishment registered in the man's face but he had no intentions of going down just yet. He kicked his leg back to try to bring Damon to the ground, but it was to no avail. Damon took advantage of the man balancing on one leg and deftly tackled him. Someone help me restrain him, Damon instructed the onlookers as he pinned the man down, and someone call the police. That seemed to jostle the other passengers out of their amazed stupor, and they scrambled to do as he said. After all, they owed their lives to this brave young man. A large, tall man twice Damon's age came and helped him hold the attacker down. Those who knew first aid began to tend to the wounded. It took a while, but they finally heard the familiar sirens of the first responders. As soon as a police car came into view, the passengers finally felt reassured and calmed down. A group of paramedics brought out stretchers and gingerly carried the severely injured to the ambulances, while the officers apprehended the subject and interviewed the witnesses. The moment they got to the part where the criminal was subdued and the police asked how it had come about, everyone started talking all at once. It was a young man, a student. He was so very brave. And strong, too. He took on that guy twice his size by himself. You have to reward the boy, officer. There aren't many good young people like him these days. Oh, that's him over there. What's that paper he's holding? Oh my, it looks like he's supposed to take the SATs today. As another officer approached, Damon glanced at his watch and slapped his forehead in dismay. Oh no, my test is going to start in a few minutes. Without missing a beat, the officer called out to his colleagues. Hurry and get me an available police car. We can't let our little hero miss his test. They made quick work of it, and soon Damon was inside a police car as it sped through the streets, sirens blaring all the way to Bridgerton High School. It was certainly thrilling, all the more given that they arrived at the campus just a couple of minutes before the test officially began. Damon bounded out of the car and went over to the driver's side. Thank you so much, officer. The policeman nodded and shook his head. Good luck on the test. You're a hero. Once the test is over, I will personally make sure that you're recognized for your bravery. Damon gave him one last wave before sprinting into the school. Luckily, he made it just in time. The first part of the test was the essay section. The atmosphere in the testing room was anxious and slightly frenzied as pencils scratched frantically across paper, but Damon remained calm, and he breezed through the first section easily. It was as if he hadn't been in a life-or-death incident just moments ago. At noon, Damon ate the lunch he'd brought with them in the hall during a break from the test. After the break, it was time to take the math portion of the test. He handled it just as well as he'd handled the first sections, and actually finished the difficult questions half an hour earlier than the rest of the students. But he didn't turn in his paper test just yet. Instead, he carefully went over it again and checked that his answers were correct. He waited for the time to be called and submitted his papers along with everyone else. He breezed through the rest of the sections in a similar fashion. Damon went home that day feeling light and carefree. He knew he had done well on the SATs. When evening came, Liam and Emmett came over, and the boys went out on their usual rounds. They rode their bikes to the river. The wind was blowing that night, and it was a bit cold, but they didn't mind. Everything seemed peaceful and serene. It was Emmett who brought up the SAT, asking how it had gone for the other two. They both said it was okay. Then Emmett asked which universities they most wanted to get into. Damon said he wanted to attend a university in a big city, and Liam agreed. As for Emmett, he wanted to go to military school. Another gust of wind blew past them. 
Liam began to hum a melody from one of his new favorite songs. He'd heard it online just a few days ago and had immediately liked it so much he downloaded it. It was a song about a young person's nostalgia for his easy childhood and his hopes for the future. What's that song? Emmett asked curiously. I like the sound of it. Isn't it a great song? Liam said eagerly before nodding with some pride. I love it, and it's been stuck in my head for days. It's called Time Flies. It's been super popular online lately. Liam wasn't particularly interested in singing, and he had never really been good at it either. But he loved pop songs, especially this one. How come I never heard it before? Emmett said with surprise. He could tell why the song was popular, but was confused about how he hadn't heard it yet. He was usually on top of the latest internet craze. Who's it by? Someone named Ryan Gold. I think this is his first song. It doesn't seem like he had a fan base until recently, and I couldn't find any other music by him. Liam turned to Damon then. What about you? Have you heard the song? Of course. And I can sing it even better than the original. Damon joked. Liam laughed and punched Damon in the shoulder. Sure you can, he said. The boys spent the next few hours hanging out by the river and talking about their future plans. When it got late, they biked back to the neighborhood together, Liam singing all the way home. Three weeks later, the day SAT scores were released, Damon got to Jefferson High School bright and early. As he sat with his classmates waiting for the first period to begin, he could tell there was an anxious buzz in the air. Many of the students were frowning and looking downcast. Mr. Thompson arrived in the classroom a few minutes after the bell. Because he took on the role of college advisor for all students at Jefferson, he'd received all their SAT scores early that morning. He gave students free time to study while he went over them. Students pretended to study while anxiously sneaking glances at him as he looked at his computer. From time to time, he would sigh or grunt in what was clearly dissatisfaction. Needless to say, he was very disappointed with what he was seeing. After the first hours, he was glowering, and his expressions only worsened as time wore on. He had good reason, too. If none of his students managed to get high enough scores, not only would he not receive a bonus, his very job could be compromised. The more he thought about this, the darker his mood became. Of course, Damon wasn't affected by his surroundings at all. He sat at his desk and pored over his notes. Every now and then, he would scribble on a piece of paper. The entire time, a small, confident smile never left his face. After a while, Mr. Thompson sat back from his desk, drank some water, and tried to calm himself. It was then that he caught sight of Damon, who looked to be hard at work studying his notes. For one brief second, the teacher hesitated and considered going over to the boy. He ultimately decided against it, though, and returned to his work. Just as Mr. Thompson was going over the next batch of students' scores, the elderly physics teacher, Mr. Michaels, walked through the back door into the classroom. He walked through the rows of students and finally stopped beside Damon. Though the boy was a transfer student who was about to graduate, the physics teacher still held him in high regard. He had scored extremely high on the practice test that fall, after all, the highest he'd ever seen. Mr. Michaels knew that Mr. Thompson swore that Damon had cheated, but he had his doubts about that. Sure, Damon's scores had gone back down in subsequent practice tests, but the physics teacher had been around long enough to have developed a keen, discerning eye. What had instantly caught his attention was the fact that Damon botched several of the easy questions, but always answered the difficult ones in a clear and organized manner. He suspected that Damon was deliberately hiding his full potential. And if that were true, then the boy's intellect and skills were indeed exceedingly outstanding. With this in mind, the teacher silently walked behind Damon's chair and looked over his shoulder. Damon was doing a math problem set, and Mr. Michaels could see his answers. They were all correct. Damon had sensed that the teacher was behind him, but he didn't turn to check. Instead, he continued to focus on his work. As his pencil moved in smooth strokes over the paper, the physics teacher's face grew more and more amazed. At first, he was rather calm, his interest mild and strictly professional. However, as the minutes progressed, he personally witnessed Damon's brain in action, 
the teacher's interest turned to disbelief, then confusion, then finally, awe. Damon blazed through the math problems without a single incorrect answer. When he came to the end of the problem set, Damon finally lifted his pencil and let out a long breath, his lips curved into a smile of relief. Even he was sometimes still astonished by his abilities. Hello, Damon. How did you do on the SATs? The physics teacher asked with some apprehension. He already knew the answer, but it was so inconceivable that he needed to hear it confirmed out loud. I checked them this morning, and I don't remember the exact number, Damon replied. But I think I got about a... 2360? That number was close to his actual score, but he wasn't exactly being truthful. He'd gotten 800s on every section. 2400 total. Damon had gotten a perfect score. Vaguely, he wondered how many other students in the district had gotten the same thing. He thought some kids at Bridgerton probably had, but maybe not at Jefferson. He knew that people probably wouldn't believe him if he told them his real score. It would be believable for someone like Veronica or Avery, but not for him. 2,400 points was almost an impossible score after all, and he really didn't want any unnecessary attention. That was why he didn't tell Mr. Michaels his real scores. As expected, Mr. Michaels was impressed even by the made-up number. A 2360? The physics teacher blurted out. He gaped at the boy, his eyes wide with incredulity. His mouth opened and closed several times as he thought he was trying to say something else, but nothing more came out of it. I must have misheard, he thought to himself. Jefferson High School had never had a student score so highly before. Damon took in the teacher's ridiculous expression and felt a sense of satisfaction. Even so, he didn't want to lie to the man, so he added, Like I said, I don't remember the exact number, so give or take a few points. Then, without waiting for a response, he gathered up his belongings and walked out of the classroom. Mr. Michaels, what happened? Mr. Thompson called out from the other side of the room. Why are you in such a daze? Mr. Thompson had left briefly to refill his water bottle and returned just after Damon had departed. That was when he caught the sight of the physics teacher standing at the back of the room, looking stunned out of his wits. Mr. Thompson, Mr. Michaels mumbled, that new student in your class, have you seen his SAT scores yet? No, I'm still going through them all. Why? He just told me that he thinks he got a 2360. Mr. Michaels raised both of his arms as he said this, his eyes bugging out of their sockets. Mr. Thompson gritted his teeth and glared at the older man. He lost his grip on his water bottle and it fell to the floor. Are you messing with me? He said in a low and menacing voice. The physics teacher shook his head fervently and Mr. Thompson narrowed his eyes. It didn't seem like Mr. Michaels was playing a trick on him, nor did he have any reason to lie. Mr. Michaels had always been a serious man and he was about to retire. Surely he didn't have the time or energy to waste on that type of nonsense. The temperature had dropped significantly in the last few weeks, and the cold wind whipped fiercely. But Damon walked across the campus with light steps, his heart swelling with gratification and fulfillment. He boarded the bus and watched the scenery outside as he rode all the way home. Things were finally looking up for him. When he arrived in his neighborhood, he saw three people walking together ahead of him, Liam, Emmett, and Avery. It looked like the three of them had returned home together. Bridgerton always had a half day when SAT scores came out because it was such a huge deal for the students there. Liam ran over to him excitedly. Damon, did you get your scores? 